<laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Meet Elminster Ormar, a good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. Oh, for the love of... Uh, well, this way then. Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. A wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. What a delightful wedge of old as Turin that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Elminster. Right. Um, you see, I am... Um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. The long-awaited question. Now, if you please, Elminster, for the too long-awaited answer. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute that most insidious of evils. Alas, the creature that afflicts you, the ill-begotten magic that it weaves, is inextricably conjoined with both the greater purpose and the greater master that it serves. 
You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nahastra mistra real Italian thras annas. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the skies strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. It's not a demand he wanted to make of me. As mistress chosen, he had no choice but to deliver her message. However much it pained him to do so, for Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. 
It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course. We offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. If there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. But alas, only one solution is offered. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. We may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against. What's on your mind? She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. No doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have, and only I can wield it. Oh, you know me, ever the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. The truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. A shame my first brush with the famed Elminster couldn't be a tad more optimistic. Listen, I might invoke the triad from time to time, appeal to Helm, but I'm no man of faith, not like Gale. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death among countless others to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big Bomb be damned. Gale's got everything he needs to defeat the Absolute already. Talent, nerve, and powerful allies at his side. I hope he'll come to see that. Well met. What's on your mind? I can't believe Mistress demanding Gale sacrifice himself to destroy the Absolute. It's just a waste of a perfectly good cult that we could be controlling. And a waste of a perfectly good Gale, I suppose. Oh, was that Gale's granddad? Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. But all right. Must have had something important to say to Gale if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. <laughs> Whoa, now, he's got a... 
Well, I guess that would explain a little, but... Mistra? <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? to pick the right one. Well, better yet, I'll do it. <sighs> Fucking wizards, man. They always need help picking the simple, obvious option. If Mistra can't think of another way to stop the Absolute than sacrificing Gale, she's no god worth worshipping. I'll say that to Gale in, you know, gentle terms. Hey, you. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tirsu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. What's on your mind? I question the wisdom of that. I'll be here in the... Well met. That's the spirit. Supreme Kithrak, has Vlakit sent you to slay me with your own blade? I've not come to kill you, Lazel. I've come to aid you. Don't trust him. Skakek Kyrgyz Shabeleth. 
My blade rests. Mother Gith compels you to listen. Speak. My ear is yours. I know you carry the astral prism, Lazel. Within it lies the seed of Vlakith's demise, and I intend to help you bring it to fruition. Vlakith's demise? Shkaketh! I should run you through for suggesting it. If they have not said, they must have good reason, and I won't be the one to betray them. But the one inside's chosen you as an ally, protects you with their power. That very power will be the end of Vlakith's tyranny. The Prism's tenant must be let loose. I've sought their freedom for eons. When the Prism went missing, I feared the worst. Instead, you've granted the opportunity I've so long awaited. All that remains is the key that unchains them. And I've found someone who I believe can provide it. Bring the Prism to Boulder's Gate. I'll be waiting in a taproom called Shares's Caress. That is where we decide the fate of my people. Lazel, together we will break our chains and be Vlakith slaves no longer. I am no slave, just still Kithrak. The Undying Queen is my freedom. It is she who will purify me and she who will ascend me. Lies, Lazel, every last one. There is no purification, no ascension. The Zaith Isk does not purify, it extracts memory and kills the infected. Nor does the Lich Queen glorify the Ascended. She feeds on most all of them to grow her power and pursue godhood. Madness! You flood me with this... this heresy! I... I will hear no more of it. Lazel, I see Talakma gear in you, sister in freedom. Together we will be our people's light. Take this. It is a Quanith, a psionic detector. The Queen's warriors hunt you. The Quanith will sound you out when you come near their portals. Hear its cry and prepare for battle or slip away. I should go. Vlakith's gaze pierces the seas and skies. She believes me loyal, and I can't afford her mistrust. Keep the astral prism close. Let no one take it from you. Slay any who try. Now to Boulder's Gate. I'll be waiting, Lazel.
There's a schism growing among the Githyanki people. And Lazel just took one step towards choosing a side. Well met. So we're going to meet Voss in the city, are we? Set the tenant of the prison free? This is all very, uh... I don't know. I like a good caper, but I'd long for a tiny bit of status quo now and again. I didn't expect Lazelle to turn on the Lich Queen so readily. Wonders never cease. Vlakith cost Sivim Hrath crash head. Only in Vlakith may we find light. These were the first words I ever read on Tirsu Slate, but they are no mere aphorism. They are law. They are creed. The root from which the 10,000 protocols stem. Forsake one protocol and forsake Vlakith. Forsake Vlakith and be the blood and meat which sates her dragons. If Voss speaks true, if Ascension is a lie, if tadpole purification is a fairy tale, then I have not sinned against Vlakith. She has sinned against me. Ascension is a young Gith Yankee's greatest honor. Long ago, the Geich enslaved my people. They dominated our minds and bred us for war, until Great Mother Gith took a hammer to our bonds. From the day of our hatching, young Gith have one purpose. To train hard enough to slay a Geich and take its head. Then, we speak the right of ascension, and a red dragon comes to fly us to Vlakith, in Tunarath, city of death. We are honored with an eternal home in the Astral, celebrated for our victory. We are ascended. Or so I believed. I never thought Vlakith a tyrant, or me as a vassal. She was the source of my might, and I the envoy of her will. A warrior, a champion, a destroyer. But if Voss is right, and Vlakith consumes the Ascended to gain power, then I am no destroyer. I am mere livestock, bred to be harvested and devoured. Every Gith Yankee is a slave with a singular purpose. Not to cull the Geich, not to prevent their grand design, but to raise Vlakith to true godhood. I don't know. I can't know. And that drives me mad. At first, I thought them an illithid deception, a trick of the tadpole. But the dream figure is real. It lives in the prism. Voss believes they are the seed of Vlakith's demise and the agent of Githyanki freedom. And I believe he may be right. Then, when the Kithraki come for me, and come they will, I will submit to their blades. They would feed me to their dragons, and I would deserve no better. Yes. I'd like time to think. We'll meet Kithrak Voss at Charesis Caress in Baldur's Gate. Until then, be vigilant. Vlakith's eyes are upon us. We must press forward. Let's deal with Kethrik, then find Voss in Baldur's Gate.
dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. The dog wags his tail. A the dog is unable to speak through the small... I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. All I know is I thought of you when I saw it. You smell very delicious, but I... What will Voss have to show for himself when we catch up with him, I wonder? His intelligence may yet prove the key to unlocking the artifact's secrets. We should ensure we follow up when we reach Baldur's Gate. So, Lazel's going to war with Vlakith? Going to break her chains in Baldur's Gate? Good for her. We offer our prayers to the Dark Lady, whose comfort and grace heals all. We offer our pain to the Lady of Loss, that she may truly know her faithful. We offer ourselves to the darkness, that Blessed Shah may give us her mercy. Tool will do the trick.
broken moon lantern catches your eye. Its glow now snuff. A broken. Those shadows. There's power coursing through them. Oddly familiar. Better stay on alert. I've never seen darkness like this before. It's unsettling. Only way to moonrise, unfortunately. This place. There's a power in these shadows, I can sense it. It's ancient, familiar. Hold close to the light and keep the shadows at bay. Do you feel that? I've never felt so cold, and that's me. This place will swallow us whole if we let it. Stick close to Mama Kay. I can feel the shadow's power here, but they don't seem to be harming me. The shadow curse. It doesn't seem to affect me like it does others. Not as badly, at least. Do you know what this means? I must be blessed. Lady Shah is protecting me where others are left to face her wrath. She loves me. She must do. Carried away? Hardly. The proof is right there. Just be grateful someone can handle this place. Lady Shah wouldn't bless me like this for no reason. There must be something she wants of me. Those signs we found about Dark Justicias, perhaps they were no coincidence. In either case, I need to watch for any place dedicated to Lady Shah. A temple, perhaps. Ooh. This place is... heavy. for me.
something to do with the Shadow Curse? I truly hope this blight isn't spreading. I can feel her. Last light in west. Moonrise Towers, Southwest. The Shadow's hunger is endless, it seems. Stay together! Keep to the light! So you can fry us alive? I don't think so. Come into the light, hands high. Jonas, look out! Come! Come! 
go from here? lies before me. Well done. Now we've got to move. I know a safe place. 
Give me your map. Keep your torch high. If you step into the shadows, you'll be felled in a heartbeat. That's right. Protected by magic. Only spot in the region that's not been swallowed up by this damn curse. Light will save you here on the outskirts, but a few paces deeper you're screwed. If you want to catch your breath, the inn's the only place to do it. Hope to see you there. Harpers, move out! sense a young woman gazing at moonrise towers in awe. Perhaps one day she will get to gaze out from atop it, she hopes. He had dreams of boarding a ship in Baldur's Gate and seeing the world. But then the darkness came. Corrupted by the shadows, would be wise to leave it alone. Never a dull moment. What's 
story. 